Today, I want to touch on this very awesome word that uh, we say quite often. Quite often. And it's, uh, can we go to 2 Corinthians 1.20? Can we all read this out loud? For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the, say it out loud, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. So today I want to focus on that one word, amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, hello church, you there? All right. So the word amen, we say amen a lot, right? We say amen, amen, amen. But do we understand what it means? Do we understand why is the word amen so important, so vital? And, and I began to study a little bit on it and I realized amen is like putting a, a stamp of approval and receiving what God has given you. I will show it to you in word. I'll show it to you. Uh, let me read uh, something. First of all, the meaning of amen. Let me read two meanings here. Number one, it means firm or faithful. You're declaring God is faithful when you say amen. Number two, at the beginning of a discourse, you know, well, at the beginning of a sermon or, or a prayer, you say surely, truly, or for truth. So in other words, you're saying this is true. All right? So when you say amen, you're not only saying God is faithful, you're also saying this is true. All right? Or we say it at the end, like for example, we say it at the end of a prayer, right? Which uh, in another word, so it's a custom, which means so be it or let it be fulfilled. Let it be fulfilled. It was a custom which passed over from the synagogues to the Christian assemblies that when he who read or discoursed had offered up solemn prayer to God, the others responded, Amen, and thus made the substance of what was uttered their own. Did you hear that? So when you say Amen, you're taking that prayer and whatever was read as your own. You're not just responding to something. You're saying that prayer that that person prayed, I say Amen to it and I make it my own. It is now my prayer, my blessing, I receive it. Do you understand what I'm saying, church? Let me keep going. This word has been called the best known word in human history. Best known word in human history. The word amen is directly related. Now listen to this. In fact, almost identical to this one Hebrew word called amam. All right? How many of you remember this? Amen and that's what? Amam. Now the word amam means believe or faith believe or faith and so faith and amen are related so in the hebrew word when you say amen you through your faith you're reaching out to god's promise and saying god i accept so be it let it be mine god is faithful so amen comes from the hebrew word aman and thus it came to mean Sure or truly, an expression of absolute trust and confidence. That's what, when you say amen, you're saying, God, my full confidence and my full trust is in your word. So next time when someone prays, uh, you know, in a group prayer, I don't say amen till right at the end. Because I'm like, the conversation is not over yet. <laughs> People are still praying. But when I hear something that strikes my heart, I say Amen. Which means, Lord, I receive that word that was spoken, or I receive that prayer, and I make it my own. I make it my own. So when you pray, and when you say amen, you are saying, Lord, let it be. I agree with this prayer. Let, uh, let's look at Matthew 6, 9 to 12. Matthew 6, 9 to 12. Look at this. This then is how you should pray. Our Father... In heaven, you can read out loud, hallowed be your name. Just keep going. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Keep going. Give us today our daily bread. Pay attention to every segment of that prayer. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. Keep going. Is that it? Okay, there's more. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for and ever. A. Amen was not included by a church. Jesus said, Amen. Jesus included that Amen. So in other words, 
he is agreeing to this prayer. Our Father who is in heaven. There's only one Father. Who, what's his name? That's the Son. <laughs> what's his name? Jehovah. God. Our Father who is what? So you're saying amen to someone who is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. You're saying amen to, God, to a name above all names. Thy kingdom come. You're saying amen to God's kingdom alone. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. When you say amen, you're saying, God, I accept your will. Hey. So when you say, Lord, may your will be done in my life, and you say amen, you're, you're accepting his will. Amen, church. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's why I'm very careful. I listen to, uh, to prayers. I listen to the word. And I'm very careful to which part I say amen to. <laughs> if there's a curse in it, I ain't saying amen to that. <laughs> if there's a blessing, I will say yes, amen. That is mine. That is mine. The, let's look at Luke 23, 42. Luke 23, 42. This is Jesus hanging on the cross with the thief right next to him. And, and just saying, do you remember the thief said, you know, remember me when you go into your kingdom. And what did Jesus say? Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Oh, there's one more verse there. Verse 43. Are you able to find it? Luke 23, verse 43. It'll be there in 5, 4, 3. There you go. <laughs> Jesus answered him, I tell you the truth. Other translation as the translation said, Amen. I tell you today, you will be with me in paradise. Jesus was agreeing with him and saying, Amen. Today, you will be with me in paradise. In Deuteronomy 27, 9 to 26, look at this. You, you, look at this. This is awesome. Uh, the, then Moses and the priests who are Levites said to all Israel, Be silent to Israel and listen. You have now become the people of the Lord your God. Saying, now you are dedicated to the Lord your God. Keep going. Obey the Lord your God and follow his commands and decrees that I give you today. Let's uh, keep going. On the same day, keep going to verse 13. Let's try verse 13. Keep going. One more. The Levites shall recite to all the people of Israel in a loud voice, saying, Cursed is the man who carves an image of, or casts an idol, a thing detestable to the Lord, the work, of, the work of the craftsman's hand, and sets it up in secret. Then all the people shall say what? Amen. So they're agreeing and saying, Lord, amen to it. Let it be, so it be fulfilled, or that is true. Keep going. Curse is the man who dishonors his father or his mother. We need to read the Old Testament and see how strict God was about respecting our parents. Amen. <laughs> that shall all the people say, what? Amen. Next verse. Curse is the man who moves his neighbor's boundary stone. <laughs> you, you go in there and you move his boundary. Then all the people shall say, Amen. keep going. Curse is the man who leads the blind astray on the road. Then all the people shall say, Amen. look at it. Keep going. <laughs> Curse is the man who withholds justice from the alien, the fatherless, or the widow. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Keep going. Curse is the man who sleeps with his father's wife, or he disowns his father's bed. Then all the people shall say, Amen. Man, you see how real Bible is. He ain't messing with you. He's just saying, If this is the case, say Amen. Keep going. Curse is the man who has sexual relations with any animal. Then all the people shall say, <laughs> Amen. Keep going. Curse is the man who sleeps with the sister, the daughter of his father, or the daughter of his mother. Then all the people shall say, Amen. There's a curse on that. <coughs> Keep going. Curse is the man who sleeps with his mother in law. Oh my Lord. <laughs> then all the people shall say, Amen. Keep going. Curse is the man who kills his neighbor secretly. Murder. And all the people shall say, Amen. keep going. Curse is the man who accepts a bribe to kill an innocent man. Oh my goodness. All the people shall say, Amen. keep going. Curse is the man who does not uphold the words of the law by carrying them out. Then all the people shall say, Amen. keep going. I think there's one more or something. Nope, that's it. Every time the word of God was proclaimed, the people said, Amen. That's why anytime you read scripture, 
and you see that it is for you. You latch onto it like it's your dear life and say, Lord, I say amen. I say amen. That word amen is so connected to your faith. I, when I began to read that, I began to understand, I shouldn't just say amen just because someone prayed. I should listen. And if that prayer has so much value that it's impacting my heart, I say amen. I heard this one story, Joseph Prince said this one story, of this Jewish guy who, who lived till 87 years old and he was still alive. And they, one day uh, they asked him, what was, what's the secret of your long life? What is the secret? And he said when he was a child, this was way before the, the, the Holocaust happened, the way before that happened, he was in a classroom and this rabbi came out and began to just share from the Torah, from God's word, and he said, all of you are going to live to 87 years old and you're going to be blessed. He just used God's word to bless them. Now there were children, they were all laughing because in their heads they're like, who would ever live till 87? But this one young kid heard it and said, Amen. And the moment he said amen, he said he felt this warm, warm blanket. It was almost like a protection around him. And even 87 years later, that kid was still, that man was still alive. It's not magic. All you're doing is from your heart, you're listening to God's word and you're saying, Lord, I receive it. I accept it as mine. So when you read scripture that says uh, God wants to bless you with long life, say amen to that. Don't dream about your death or your funeral. Dream about long life. You're going to see your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren. And they're all going to be blessed. I know we would like to sit and pout on, on, on all the negative things and, and wish that the whole world would pay attention to you. But for once, let's listen to God's word and say amen to it to receive that blessing. That's why the Bible says all the promises of God are yes and what? Amen. And who are the promises of God for? For you. For us. Then why do we turn to the wrong resource when the blessings come from Him alone? Amen, church? You, the, the, you, am, are you with me there? Uh, Revelation 3.14. Look at this. Revelation 3.14. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the what? The amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. Who is that? Jesus. He is the amen. You want to know who has the last word? Not you. God. God has the last word. Amen is a response of your faith to what God says. His word over people's word, his truth over worldly wisdom, his promises over human broken promises, we say amen to agree with what? His word. Um, there's, there's one last one there, Luke 138. I missed that. Luke 138. Luke 138. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. Say, everyone say it out loud. May it be. What is that? Amen. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left her. Imagine if uh, Mary said, well, <laughs> why me? Why should me? Oh, I guess not. But when Mary heard the word of the Lord from the angel, she agreed. There was an agreement made between her and heaven. And she said, may it be. Amen to that. And what happened after this? She conceived Jesus Christ in her womb. Church, some of you ought to conceive the word of God inside of you. Amen? Do not let God's word be thrown astray. Do not let God's word be thrown astray. That's why I will stand for this word. It's being slammed these days, but I will stand for this word. I've got, I put together a bunch of promises of God and as we read them, if it relates and connects to you, then respond amen. Don't respond amen just because everyone else is doing it. If you see something in there and you say, wow, that is for me, then say amen. All right? You ready, church? Are you ready? Yes. You're ready to declare and to say this word that God has given is for me today.
Are you ready to receive it? Let's go. Um, first one there, 2 Peter 1, 4. To these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. Amen. Praise God. Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. Amen. Matthew 11, 28 to 29. Come to me all who are weary and burdened and I will give you rest. Next verse. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest from your, for your souls. Next, Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. You can say amen in between this if you want. Keep going. Even youth grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall. Keep going. You don't have to say amen to that. But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Amen. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And they're... Amen. <laughs> Philippians 4.19 And my God will meet some. Some. Only a little. All your needs according to his glorious riches in Christ Jesus. Amen. Romans 8, 37 to 39. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Amen. Keep going. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither present nor the future nor any powers. Keep going. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We say, Amen. keep going. I think there's another one. There, Proverbs 133. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Amen. It, thank you. John 14, 27. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Amen. Only a few people want peace. I say amen. <laughs> Romans 6.23 Romans 6.23 Oh sorry, Romans 10.9 Romans 10.9 That if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead you will be saved. We say Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is what? Eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Psalm 32, 30 verse 2 I mean. Oh Lord my God, I called to you for help and you healed me. Amen. Amen. Isaiah uh, 53, 4-5 Surely he took up, took up our firm infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. Keep going. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds we are healed, we say. Amen. Psalm 107.20 He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. People say, Amen. Amen. Man, some of them, people, it's good that you're picking. Isaiah 58 8. Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. People say, Amen. Psalm 34 15. And 17, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. We say, Amen. keep going. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. Amen. Amen. Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Who's going to say amen to that? Amen. John 10, 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Who says that? Amen. 
Last one, 1 Chronicles 16, 36. Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Then all the people said, Amen, and praise the Lord. Could I get the worship team to come up now, please? Amen.